course. We just finished an array of four circles. We're going to talk about fillets and rounds. If you look at the front view, you're going to see some areas that have been rounded off. And I want to show you how AutoCAD treats fillets and rounds. Here you'll find two commands, fillet and chamfer. We're going to use fillet for both fillets and rounds. Click fillet. The first thing to do is ask you to select first object. But we don't want to do that this time because we need to set a radius first. You can hit the down arrow like you see on your mouse, or in this area here with your mouse you can click on different options. Click on radius. We need to change the radius. The radius of our fillets are in the handout. It says it's 0.125. Change it to 0.125. The fillet radius will stay 0.125 as you use the command from now on until you change the fillet radius again. Now we need to select two objects to round off a corner. Okay, let me zoom in and show you how it works. Click and click, and that's it. Okay, the command ends, so you need to repeat the command to do the other side. Okay, now, ignore that change in measurement. Now what happens in situations like this? Sometimes when you do a fill it in round, and you pick two lines, you might see a break in the line, or situations like this. When that does happen to you, all you need to do is redraw the line before you continue making your new fillets and rounds. So here's another round here and here. And this piece is all left broken apart because of the fillet and round edit. A situation like this will happen a lot. You may just have to redraw the lines again. This line, for example, I know will have to be extended back to here because that's part of my feature describing that part of the axle flange. The next step is to draw all of the hidden lines you see in the front view corresponding to the details in the top view. I've already started that. You'll be drawing construction lines projecting down using quadrant and other snaps to extend them down to here. So I started the process to indicate where all the lines are going to be located. Those will be our hidden lines. After you project all the lines on either side of this feature, you'll be using the trim command and the hidden line layer to draw the lines you see here. One of the dimensions you need that you may not find right off the bat is this dimension, excuse me, this measurement from here to here. Okay. That measurement is from the counterbore measurement up above. Let me show you where it's located. The counterbore measurement is right here. The counterbore measurement is a feature described by two parts. The diameter of the counterbore, which is this diameter, and the depth of the counterbore, which describes the depth from the top to the drill hole. The drill hole of 0.5 is corresponding to this area of our axle flange here, right here. Go ahead and draw those features. I'll explain to you how to draw the holes for the four holes that are arrayed in the axle flange. I'm referring to what you see here in as hin lines and serin lines. There's holes here, holes here, and holes here. Okay. One method of doing this is the following. I could easily just grab these here, turn two of them into hen lines, and then turn one of them into a center line. I could then use the trim command. Trim is used by selecting trim, hit the enter key, and then pick parts I don't want. I don't want this, this, and this anymore. And there's my center line, my hen lines. I'll grab the center line, Pull up 0.25 and down 0.25, which is the distance serine lines minimum should be from an object. I would repeat the same place, same here and over here. Now we talked about line type scales before. Our line type scales are 0.5 or half our full size scale. This is how you get your hidden lines, serine lines to look the way they should. That's already been done over here. Okay. So make those holes here, and here, and here, 
add the other center line that you see here so you would get this feature all these features here the next step is to draw a feature of the axle flange that you see here these green hand lines indicate that this feature is beneath other parts of the axle flange let's look at the front view to understand what you see here this looks like a cylindrical opening that is allowing something to be inserted into the shaft of this axle flange it is a grease fitting that's been attached to the housing of this axle flange which you could better see through this broken out section we're going to draw this feature here it'll be hidden but in this broken down section it'll be drawn as object lines because we created an opening to visibly see what's happening inside when we do that anything that was once a hidden line will turn into a visible line as you see here and you would draw what's called a cutting plane line or a breakout section line as you see here that's drawn freehand for the most part and what you see here in blue is a section line which I probably should make a little brighter so you can see it it just happens to be blue on black that indicates that this feet part of the object has been physically cut and exposed but this is a metal and that metal is indicated with this hatch pattern the reason why there's no hatch pattern here nor here is because these are openings. This is the counterbore, this is the shaft, and this is the location of the grease fitting for the part which is hollow. There is no physical cut of the object in this area here or here, it is here. The reason for the lines between them here and here are because these are lines represent changes in diameter of the part. It would be incorrect for the part to look like this. These have different diameters. This diameter is larger than this one. This small diameter is smaller than this one. So this would be incorrect to see it like this. It needs to look like that. Okay, so let's explain how to do that. We're going to do the following. You're going to offset this center line up and down using half of the distance of this opening, which happens to be 0.10. You'll be doing the same thing down here as well. So using the offset command, offset the center line up and down, 0 0.10. Just in case you've never done that before, I will demonstrate that here. Pick offset, half of 0 0.10 is 0 0.05, hit enter, select your object, click above, select the same object, and click below. Switch these two hidden lines and you will get tr later to trim them off. To create this feature it starts with working with a construction line from the quadrant of this feature to the right the distance that this extends beyond the object which is 0.125. So you type in 0.125 and you'd be at this location here. Draw a line up and down according to the size of this feature, which is on our drawing 0 0.250. So it goes up half a 0.25 in this direction and half a 0.25 in this direction. After you draw that, you're going to draw lines back like this. There is currently no fillets in this location. Okay, so it just has this shape. You have to use the fillet command. The fillet radius is still 0.125. We have never changed it, as you can verify by looking at it here. Let's see that on your mouse. So hit enter. You're going to pick this and this feature, and there's part of the object there. Notice I switched to the object line ahead of time, but I can also do that later. It also made that line disappear, so I didn't have to trim. Once that's taken care of, then you can just easily grab these objects and switch them to the object line layer. And that part's completely.
complete. And you'll finish trimming up the upper portions of this top view. And we're going to continue to repeat that steps down here. As you can see, it's already been filleted, but they both were drawn from basic construction lines. Repeating exactly the same method you saw up above. Where you offset this red line above and below, half a point one. You extend the line from here to here, 0.125, draw the lines up and back, and then fill it. After that's done, we need to change the line types to visible lines this time because we're going to create an opening. Let's do that. 